on my mama, mama. on my who. who, I look fly, yeah. I look good, who? touch my sway, Way. wish you cool, who? I look fly, yeah. I look good, who? on my mama, on my who, who? I look fly, yeah. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode uh, of the Success Chronicles. And we have my guy Charles Williams with us, aka Charlie Boy. And and as you can see, we're outside and it's, it's a little warm in this ticket seat, so we got our BVRs with us, our back pocket rags, but we get to sweat. Yeah, yeah. But uh we're in a historic place and this is Calvert High School here. And uh, this is where he graduated high school, but he's gonna talk a little bit about about that. But uh if we could, just first question is, you know, when come to talk about how we know one another. Well, we know each other. I mean, we've known each other for a long time since since I since I've been able to have any type of sense of age of knowledge in my age. Uh, I've known you knee high to a grasshopper, man. Yeah. Uh, I've known you. Uh -huh. uh, I've known your mother. My mother's known your mother. Uh, teachers, instructors. Uh, not only just teachers and instructors, but musicians. Right. So, not just at school, knowing each other, seeing each other at church. And when I tell you, at church, I mean, yeah. our parents are those. You get there at Sunday school, yeah. you going to church. Better hope we don't have three o'clock services, and that's that, that's cool. But if six o'clock service kick in, we yeah. all going. You're not missing the revival. <laughs> you're not remiss, you're not missing nothing, and. Yeah. And even though as kids, man, we ain't really like that. We got we got more better value and understanding about the idea of unity together, um, core understanding of self, and uh, relating to our people as well as being able to communicate. Because every person that we met there taught us how to speak to each other, yes. how to be more courteous, yeah. uh, how to be respectful, and and, and just you know. Run a path that you want to run when you're old enough to figure it out yourself no by doubt. yourself. Uh, going from there, um, I watched you in football from uh, your high school years. I was a, uh, I would have been a freshman your senior year playing. Uh, things didn't turn out that way because got it. I didn't get into some trouble, but I got into some trouble with a high school varsity coach who is not to be named. Uh, didn't uh, play my senior year, so I mean my freshman year, and then you guys moved on after that, on which I went to school from Hearn to my freshman year on up, and then I graduated from here, Calvert High, and uh, from my sophomore to my senior year. Uh, around that process, you graduated college and went to school, was coaching in Conroe, and uh, I went off to do music, but we've always been together, so we've known each other. Like you said, knee high to a grasshopper. That's it. And uh, you know, one good thing, you know, about this family, first of all, like you said, you know, our mothers, you know, they, they drug us to church and, and made sure we did things the right way. You know, and you know, like you said, growing up, you know, you are like, Oh man, you know, you don't really like it, but yeah. then, you know, as you get older and you mature and you look back on it and you thank God that you had somebody in your life that made you do things the right way. Right. And uh and, and taught us how to be and and all those kind of things. And then the other thing is, you know, your family is a great family uh, in the, in this area. You know, ones that are you know, really big in the church, uh, really big in the education system. You know, it's not too many people that have come through uh, this area that have not been, you know, touched by them in a positive way and impacted, truly impacted by them, uh, about what they've done in, in education. Right. My, uh, my mother is one of four, uh, Willie Mae Golden, Emma Jean Pierce, Stella O'Neill, and 
Jerry Lee Robinson, Williams, 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 where? Uh, <laughs> if she's watching this yes, and she. everybody that knows my mother yes, or been taught by my mother, you know what that yes, means. Yes, AKA yes. Willie Poo Poo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. man, uh, that, that's over 40, 50 years experience as being teachers and not just being teachers at the school. But all those kids throughout those years, whether they went to church or not, they were influenced by them spiritually to, yes. to give them knowledge to expand yourself, not just at church, but also as, at school, you know, to let you know that you can, don't let the boundaries right here in front of you stop you from going anywhere else. You want to expand your mind and keep moving and don't let anybody blockade your mind. If you could just talk to us uh, about your career, you know, kind of how you started, how you got into it uh, up until now. Okay, well, I, uh, like I said, I graduated in 1998, Calvert High. Uh, started working in a regular job. I didn't go, I didn't jump into the school thing uh, right off. Um, started working a job, Sanderson Farms, Chicken Farm. Mm -hmm. No problem. Uh, anything I do, I do my best to put my heart into it and, and, and get it done. So. Working a job is what I was going to do. That's what I was going to do. No slacking off, no nothing. Get to the job, make money, provide for myself. I'm an individual. I get it. Uh, around the year 2000, uh, in that process, I've been going to this music store, DJ Wolf's Hip Hop Shop, Hip Hop Shop in uh, Ryan, Texas. Um, so I meet the regular guys running the shop all the time. One day, uh, talking after work. A couple people came in from the neighborhood and they were asking me to sing, hadn't seen in a while. So, you know, just for the moment I did, the guy that wanted the shop heard, went around and gave word to uh, DJ Paul out of Huntsville, who was the, uh, is the CEO of Dirty Third Records and uh, the group, the Freestyle Kings. I came down to Huntsville and uh, to uh, supposedly sing a couple hooks for uh, some songs that they, they needed done. When I was informed that, you know, he was asked if I wanted to jump on the track, you know, do a verse on it, so then I was free to it. I was, you know, being rough and rookie to the literally just putting down bars instead of just doing touch with people. I was, I was a little hesitant, but you know, I've been there and I'm like, hey, it's not a problem, I can get this done. So I laid the track down and they didn't say nothing right off, they just looked at me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, if y'all don't like it, y'all can just erase it, you know. <laughs> so you know, another take. And so. like, man, no, can you do something else? And then you know, so from there, they asked me to do a couple more tracks. Then later on, they asked if I'd like to jump on another mixtape. And then I got on my third one. Then right after the third one, completing the uh, the tape, I sat down like a uh, like nights at the round table thing. Had me in the middle of a circle, like. Uh, we were just wondering, I mean, if you want to, you want to be down? Sure, you know, yeah. you know, cause uh, it was a, it was a, it was a joy to do it, to express myself the way I wanted to. It came out the way I wanted it to come out, right. and, uh, and 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 you bought music is your your love anyway. That's you know, y'all been like church. You know, we talk yeah. about the church. Church I is mean, my best. Phenomenal singer. So it's it's not uh, music. Music and expression of music. I've been blessed with a voice. I'm not the greatest voice in the world, uh, but I'm not the worst. And as long as it comes out of my myself the way I feel it should, I'm happy and content with it. So yeah, I'm I'm thankful to be able to express myself musically, and people enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the year 2000, I I jumped on with the label, and I've been doing music from underground to a professional career to this day. I've, uh, I've, I've had a lot of local and regional musical hits. Uh, my my most popular song to date would possibly be the song I got signed a uh, major deal to, which is called I Look Good. Yeah, that's Oh My Mama. Oh My Mama. Oh my. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it's kind of, man, it's funny. 
that that particular song is what got me on uh, to a major deal because I hate that song. It's not, and I don't hate that song as in I don't like the work I did. It's I hate that song as a lot of artists will probably say I don't uh I don't want that to be the biggest representation of me right. if I never get another opportunity. Yeah, and I've been blessed to have a whole bunch of opportunities since then. Right, but it's still one of those. I did that. I know what it's gonna do. Yeah. Please don't let this be the one to get me on. Yeah. But if it does, I'm proud of it, and it exceeded all of my expectations with that song, and put a lot of people on me on a national level mm -hmm. to do a lot more work. You know, uh, I was doing some research. You know, once you know we had set everything up with the interview. I did some research. I went back and kind of you know, looked through some, you know, things. Yeah. Man, that crush. I mean, it's it's some it's some good hits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you got out there. Yeah, you yeah. know, some, some pretty good stuff. I got to do a lot of work with a lot of uh, uh, Texas artists that that uh, have, have been up and coming. That were already established. Those that are established, I took it as a great respect and honor because they were here before me right. and. In this business, I've seen a lot of people be sideways where, I mean, they have some notoriety and they their word is not what their word is. Yeah, let's do something. Let's work. Call me. And no calls, no pickups. So it doesn't it doesn't hurt. It doesn't bother. In the matter. I'm not emotional in that manner because all I want to do is do music. If we can make some good music together, let's do it. If not, then it's your loss that we didn't make good music together. Continue to make yours. I continue to make mine. Uh, but it's it's been a wonderful and still is a wonderful ride. Uh, getting to meet people, having the opportunity to go places where where not just you get the opportunity to be in arenas, but you get the opportunity to, to come back home to roots like yours, hometowns. I I, I don't I don't uh, I don't discriminate. From wherever I get booked, it's not that I'm looking for a venue to get the biggest ticket and revenue I can get in my pocket. When people contact you, they're genuinely contacting you because they really do want to hear you. They want not just hear you, but see if they can hear that actual sound that they hear on that tape in person. Is it is it real? Is it studio made? Is it is, oh, is the hype oh, all it's, it's supposed it's to be? It's real. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. That. Yeah, yeah, it's real. Yeah, man. and and when when you do like like what what I do in the studio is how you hear it come out, and they that's what a lot of fans really do want to hear. And when when I when I when I'm there, I'm not. I'm not hostility. I'm not, let me sit in this VIP until it's time to go. I really appreciate all my fans. I stand there and take pictures, I autographs. I'm not, I'm not bougie like that. Yeah, but, but that's, that's what you know. That's who you are. Right. You know, you just, just like I said, good people. Good people. You know, good people come from good people. That's what you know. But if, if we make eye contact, I'm speaking. I'm not, yeah. I'm not yeah. ignoring you. I'm like, right. you know, like don't be surprised if I say, hey, how you doing? Out loud, not just give you the head nod, you know. Don't look funny, you know. This is like, this is what we were raised to do. Like, if I wasn't this, I'm still going, hey, how you doing? Same. Don't be surprised I spoke. Same. You don't look at me. You yeah. must want to see something. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> there it is. Uh, what's, uh, what's three things that you've accomplished that you're proud of? Man. I'm proud of graduating high school. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people nowadays looking at nowadays and the kids that all the things they have to go through with these extra, extra tests. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, these tests are not to really test your your brain, your intelligence. They're just packing it on for schools to stay open. Like they're finding ways for just for the building over to continue to get some type of funding for you to pay for something. They're not really concerned about your actual intelligence. There, these tests go on all year now. They set the tests all year. So therefore, what are you literally learning? You are you still getting to learn your actual algebra? 
is it really being taught or is it being taught systematically to pass the questions on the test? You know what I mean? And when I was growing up, we had, you know, we had the, the uh, ACT, well, STAR test. Right. Uh, and uh, that was set around the, around graduation time, only for seniors. You know, it's, 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 it's not even your, it's your basically, it became your exit level test. So, uh, you didn't, you didn't start working on that until your junior, junior to your senior year, which was kind of like, you know, being prepped for college. It's one of those, now it's time to kick it in. Because if I don't pass this and I pass all my grades at school, like literally in the class, I still don't get my, I still don't get my diploma. I don't want to, I don't want to still be here. It's time for me to go. I've done all this stuff to get here. I'm ready to get up out of here. So, uh, once that, once you get to that age and that hits you, like, it's not just about if I make straight A's on my test, I'm done. Now they throw in the place an extra test that says, no, nah, all that that you did is good, but you got to do this. Another, you still yeah, got one got to literally hurdle to get over. So passing that, that's, that's, that's an accomplishment. Uh, getting on with... 33rd Records, this music label, and literally being a part of something that started from underground and bringing it up to where it is today is a compliment. And then from there, being signed to a major for some music. I wrote, I, 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 I put together, I uh, I got I them. That came from my blood, sweat, and tears. That's the compliment. And third is having my kids. I got I got four boys, one, uh, 13, 10, 9, 3, and I never, I never knew I was going to really want kids until I got one, and now I have them, and then three came after that. <laughs> really <laughs> I really want them. <laughs> so, um, it's... Those are the biggest accomplishments because now, I mean, past the past the first three, I mean, past the first two, this third one, them is raising them not to be me, not to be anything like me, but to be four wonderful individuals that have something to contribute to this world and and do it with honor and respect, dignity, and pride in themselves and make others proud of them. What is your, what's your definition of success? My definition of success is being happy with yourself. Uh, you can, a lot of people are successful following the footsteps of their parents, being doctors, lawyers, uh, doctors and lawyers and judges. And they get happy because they accomplish that and once they get there they're not attempting anymore to be the best judge doctor mm-hmm. lawyer they can they're happy with the success that their parents are happy they made it to become something in the same field as them right I'm not I didn't push myself to be that unbeknownst to myself as I'm even grown you know at times I'm an instructional speaker I, that's not my profession, but I get called to high schools, junior highs, elementaries, to speak to kids about what I do, where I come from, and how did I get here. Uh, like, this, like I was doing this interview, man. Right. Know? It's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's a success within itself because I'm in a place a lot aspiring, to be, not just the music, but at a level of acknowledgement. Things I do don't just get looked at and brushed off. Things Mm -hmm. I do get that extra, uh, oh, he might make world star today. Oh, he's gonna be in the news today. Or somebody's gonna, they gonna bash him, make him a meme on social media, Facebook. You know, it's, I'm, I'm at that level. I'm, and I'm not one, I love talking to fans, being around fans, and doing everything. But I'm still a, a to myself person. I I still I still live around this area. 
you know, I'm I'm home here. Work everywhere. Done. I'm home. I'm comfortable. This is is it's it's the environment. Um so they look at me at a certain way and I never expected that because growing up I'm not gonna say I was perfect. I was a hard hit. Uh your grandfather <laughs> this man's grandfather. So that's back that's back to upbringing. This man's yeah. grandfather taught me how to box. Yeah. Uh and I don't mean I don't mean just box. He taught me <laughs> I mean you could call me look at me man, I'm not I'm not no yeah, I'm not no prototypical anything. You can call me a little Mike Tyson with a with a little back then Mike Tyson with Ali like literally together. I, I had it all together. Golden gloves as as a youngster. I used to handle my business and having a little anger and frustration in you when you're younger. That's not that's not the great thing to have. Uh, that's 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 a setup for you to for me to actually have been like a dangerous juvenile going to jail type person if I didn't have the rest of the fundamentals mm -hmm. of the people in my life because. Some people need things like that structure. Right. Uh, I didn't need that structure. He just happened to see I was a ball of energy that needs to focus. <laughs> Pointed in the right direction. Pointed in the right direction. And yeah. I was very thankful for that. I loved him for that. You might as well have called him my granddaddy. Yeah. And uh, my, my mother was thankful for that. My father was thankful for that as well. And I looked at him as that. I didn't have a lot of words to say when... He told me to come do some train. I trained. It wasn't any talk back. It wasn't any anything because people at that age you would talk. Not all of them are, but people you would talk that when somebody's telling you something, they're telling you something to tell you right. They're telling you something that they've been through an experience that you're gonna go through, and I'm preparing you for it now. Now I went this way, so when you get here. You're going to have the opportunity yeah. to go this way. I told you all my bad. I would advise you go this go way another. and see what this path do for you and then try to try know. So uh, that's where I am now. My success is kids asking me that. Kids mm -hmm. talking to me and asking me for advice. Yeah, you're returning that favor. I'm returning that favor because I never expected that yeah. and I never asked for it, never wished for it, and can't even say that that's what I want. Right. I wanted me to be successful, having money, uh, having stability, doing all that I just wanted to do, living my life and not be bothered. Just know that I made it for myself and go about my life. Not worry about anybody else. That was, that was my thinking individually until just really going through life, growing up, saying, you know, seeing a little more like 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 your your the elders tell you, man, you keep on living, you're gonna keep on seeing more and more and more. And I could see myself every day stepping into the life of naturally responding to people, naturally talking, naturally giving advice. Because with music, a lot of people say the game is to be sold and not told. I tell it every day if you open your mouth and, you know, ask yeah. your questions. I have no problem with that. This this is not anything I feel needs to be guarded. It's guarded amongst the people who sign us, yeah. which is why, I mean, I, I mean, the big, big monster machine labels, it's guarded from them because they don't want you to get there. Well, I'm here. I'd love for you to get here. I'd love for you to get past me. Because I don't plan on still being here. I plan on taking the step here, here, and here. Once I get there and you're still stuck there, you can have all this information. I don't need it. I don't need your money. I don't need to stifle your pockets. I don't need to stifle your intelligence, your growth. If I'm growing and you're growing, sooner or later we will grow together. Together, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all get better together. And we all get better together. Mm -hmm. And I, all this info that I've given to you, I would like to think and hope that you give to those. Don't be like the ones that are stifling us. Yeah. What do you What do you think it takes to achieve success? To achieve success. To achieve success. Honesty within self. 
Mm. Don't be afraid that you are now older, that those have the ability to find out about your past. Don't be afraid of your past. Don't be ashamed of your past. Uh, I've known a lot of friends that have gone to uh, excel in professional football, basketball, uh, track, not just sports, uh, doctors and lawyers. Life. Life. But, you know, but they went through some of the hardest personal things right. that it took them forever to actually speak to someone about. It. Uh, they like they went to the extent that they got professional help. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it only until after they got their professional help and they let their guard go that they excelled and made it to where they needed to be. You don't necessarily need professional help. You just need help. You we need. Know we all need. That. We all need help, and I, not just personal help. I mean. <laughs> To whomever you, whoever you have your faith in, yeah. you speak to your religion. You speak to your faith. You speak to whoever you feel is in the cosmos out there. Yeah. Because everybody isn't doesn't feel that religion is for them. And just know, I mean, my God's an awesome God. So if you want to try him, come on with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you need to acknowledge yourself where you come from, who you are, what you have been through, where you wish to go, because you won't get there holding yourself back. I, I truly agree with that. But I just, you're talking about the, you know, the people that you know that have been through some things. You know, I, and I heard somebody say this before, you know, in, in order to get to success, you got to fail some. Right. You know, and, and going through those times when you fail, it teaches you lessons. Right. You know, it teaches yeah, I you. I won't fail in that same area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It teaches you what to do, and more importantly, it teaches you what not to do. Not to do. You know, and so, uh, but but it's up to you to, to make the decision to learn from it. Right. And like you said, to you know, put your guard down, learn from it, move on. Let's get better. Because if you if you go into a, if you go into a job and you have no knowledge of it. You're going, oh, and they still yeah. give you that job. Yeah, they give you that job as that experience at a low level. You're gonna fail, not completely, but you're not gonna be perfect that first week. They're gonna teach you all these steps, and one day something's gonna break down, back everything up in the whole job, and it's falling on you, and you're gonna fail. It's not your. It's it's nothing wrong with that. Just don't, don't. Beat yourself into a deep depression yeah. to where it was like there was nothing I could do. No, today there was nothing you could do. You fought the best that you could and then you still failed. But tomorrow you're going to fight harder and it won't get to that point. You might still fail, but not completely again the next day. Did you get fired? <laughs> yeah. Did they allow you to come back on the premises the next day? Well, guess what? Apparently, it's, it, even if it is your fault, they see the potential in you. So if someone continues to see potential in you, don't look at the day as a loss, as a failure. Look at the day at the things that you accomplished, as the things that you got done. And you improve on no and erase the things that you feel negative about. Throw that out to the side and improve on all those areas where you are less. Because someone is going to come along to see that potential. Acknowledge your potential. Mm -hmm. Not gonna just stand on the side and say I see you. say nothing. Right. Gonna stand there, I see the work you're doing. I see you improve. Maybe this might not be anything that's gonna make you feel any different, but I want you to know that I have noticed you. I have noticed the work, I have noticed your beginning, I know it's where you are now. And I wish and hope that you continue to do the right things that you are doing because those wrongs will get corrected by someone else seeing the right things you're doing and improve. And, and it also, it also uh, brings about a sense of self-pride within yourself too because you see, hey, you know, I've, I've gone through those things that I haven't been knocked down. I'll never pick myself up. Right. You know, which in turn helps you help the people around you right. that you love. That you love. And 
man. We're, we're taught to love everybody. It's hard to love some. Because, <laughs> so, because so some, refuse, from some refuse to allow you to love them. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so they lash out with something other than love. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have the resolve and the background, and not just your original background of growth like we have our mothers and our fathers, right. who they are, being who they are, but the extended family, uh, your grandfather to me, yeah. uh, my aunts to you, yeah. just, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Without Teacher, I mean, I, he went through, he went through four, mm -hmm. he went through all four of my, my, my aunts. That's my it. mom, one class, That's my it. aunt, another class, and two more. That's not it. just, and... And they weren't just going to let you go. When you went to another grade and they saw that they needed to be on your tail, your, your, your grade of kids, they would, they had, this is how smart they were. And it's not a cap and it's not to brag. My, my, my mother and my aunts excelled in all levels of academia. Yes. They had degrees in all levels to teach all grades. And when they got with a core group of kids that they saw the potential that they needed, that represented us and our family and, and our town to be the best they could be and saw that they might falter, one of them stayed in the grade. One of them got the next grade up. One of them got the next grade up. One of them got the next grade up. And then one year, all four of them was in the same level because they were not going to let a group of kids fail. And... That's what you need as teachers. You need those type of teachers that I'm not going to allow you to fail. Yeah. Because I see all the potential. So as long as I got opportunity, I'm going to be here academically. Uh, not only that, the people that they married to for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. One, one uh, my Uncle Sam's in the military, my Uncle Herbert. He was a coach. So he he's, <laughs> he's from junior high to high school with me. For uh, for the most part, all that. Uh, my uncle Sam, he's I mean my uncle uh, William Golden, he does carpentry. Uh, my father, he worked for UBS. He worked for uh, a place called Alcor. Uh, he's retired now. But on all facets, my family just just going from the, the aunts and uncles and their their kids. Our kids have grown up to be teachers, oh, instructors. So, uh, and, and, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this, and I don't wanna. I'm sorry to no, cut it off, but I just want to say too, like, you know, yes, uh, the aunts and uncles were amazing people, but when you have amazing people, they produce amazing offspring, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so, I mean, you look at the things that the kids from that are doing as well, yeah. and it's no coincidence. Yeah, I mean, you know? it, it's as core core group. I mean, as a core group, you have. You have family. That's your core group. The people on your block yeah. is your village. Yeah. Nowadays, it's hard to be able to raise your child because there's not a village there anymore. There are individual core. And my family is, is a part of these towns. We're not just those that, I'm not just saying that people gravitate to us. No, we're going to make you gravitate to us. That's true. We come to you. We, <laughs> yeah. we hey, how you doing? Everything <laughs> all right? I ain't feeling too good today. Well, I got, well, my son got his bike today. If your boy need a ride to school, yeah. uh, ride to school. I, I didn't say I'm going to give him a ride. Yeah. You know, you know, they didn't beat us. But I got that pop on the back of the head in church and everything. My mama stopped playing music. I'm in, I'm hiding. <laughs> I'm in the choir. But I done went ahead in the back because I know my song coming up. You know what I'm saying? The song is playing. I'm not there. Music stopped playing. She come find me in the bathroom. You know, I can, you know, it's it's and not only that, if she found my friend in here, he getting it too. So it's 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 the value that look, you are who you are. Don't forget your training, don't forget your raising. Hey. You here with him? Y'all are friends. Right. You Don't two build each other up. That's it. Don't let the next person fall. You teach mine or not. My four boys. They go to the park. It's 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 three or four courts out there. 
first curse word, swear anything here, they come right back home. I'm not out there. They come right back home. They were out there being disrespectful and everything, said something. Well, why'd you come home? I don't want anything being said that I was out there saying. Did you want to say it? No. I know what it'll do. So, I mean, and not only that, they're friends. Hey, hey, it's not that, hey, they over here fighting and everything. They're over here saying all this stuff. They're friends. Looking out for them. Hey, man, y'all go home here today, not today to be out here. And then later on, their friends come to the house. Hey, Mr. Charlie Boy, Mr. Mr. Williams, uh, uh, they knew came to the park and blah, blah, but we told them to go home because they were fighting. So is it all right if we come over here and play? Yeah. You are free to. Yeah, yeah. You, you free to go anywhere we go. Right. You are welcome. You are welcome to go anywhere we go. I don't care if it's just going to the next town, to go to a park, to go to a movie. You are free to come here. You, my kids are free to go hang with you as long as you keep being the type of friend you are. Because I hope they keep being the same type of friend to you. If your parents come talk to me about what my kid did, if you and I have a close knit relationship, if he did anything where there was some type of corporate punishment as a pop, I have value in the reason yeah. why you did what you did. We're going to discuss it. You didn't get hurt or completely harmed. I was informed all along the way by the person who actually did it, yeah. by the other neighbor and friend that saw it, yeah. to, to vouch and understand, and not just be the, the parent and say, yeah, he did it, but to also assist in giving the child's side. Yeah. That's a bit. Mm -hmm. That's not just being one side of where I want to, hey, let me get on. I'm the next one down the line, bring him on down here, let me take care of it. Doing it's the right way. going it the right way, teaching where well, not only that child has respect for his parents, but he's continued the respect of his elders, not because his parents said so, said so, but because his elders showed him so. I have respect for you, young man. I have respect for you, sir, my elder. Ma'am. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you very much. Please. No. You know, core values aren't just taught by your parents or your family. Everything you do is an extension. Your family tree, if you, if, if you notice some people have small family trees, actual bloodline. So that tree is so much more bigger because of the friends they gravitated to, the people that relationships, relationships in their lives. Yeah. The the people you went to school with has so much family that you did stuff for that kid in school that they respect you for taking up for them. Uh, you you earn so much value within yourself that you don't even realize until it's brought to your attention right. that the things you do, the small ripples in the pond, you yeah. may create so many ways. And that I'm just, I'm thankful and appreciative to my family. And I keep talking about my family because yeah. I wouldn't have any of those values, any of that understanding. I wouldn't be the person that I actually am that received the blessing I received to express myself with music without my mother without without my grandmother that taught her to teach me the value of of pushing working hard going after what you want i wouldn't i wouldn't be respected and and appreciated by my kids friends because i might i might be the only person that says something positive to them today uh i might have i, I might have I be be the only one that did anything as far as showed him any type of affection. Give me a bottle of water, man. Uh, like that's not big. You thirsty, you know? Yeah, yeah. On the couch for it. Well, nobody else. They yeah. won't even let me use the water faucet. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's that. It's everybody doesn't get exposed to that. But for those of you that possibly watching, that's. Those are some of the things in these two small towns we have been exposed to. Uh, kids going to school without shoes. Like, literally, going to shoe school without shoes every day. Are you going to say something and get those, get whoever's involved in trouble? No, I'm going to do my best to get the kids some shoes. Why? That kid comes to school every day. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, he yeah. not he not coming to school just to eat the food. Yeah. This kid is is working hard, getting good grades, or managing the grades that he can manage yeah. through whatever emotional things that we don't see right in front of right in front of us. You know, it's it's not your fault. It, it might not even be your parents' fault, but it's your duty as the person you are to do the best you can to help whoever you can. Give your service. Give your service. Well, thank you so much for your time and interviewing uh, with the Success Chronicles. Uh, appreciate what you do and just, you know, like you say, encourage to keep pushing and doing the positive things that you're doing. And uh, thank you guys for checking out this episode with Charlie Boy on the Success Chronicles. God bless. Bye. Bye.